So here's my visual representation of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. But he who unites himself with, uh, with the Lord is one with him in spirit. A few verses before that, you know, it's talking about when you are, um, it says, let's see, shall I then ask or take the members of Christ and un unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you, do you not know that he who unites himself with the prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh, kind of like going back to the Genesis uh, reference for Adam and Eve. The two will become one flesh. So in this visual representation, so this is you, this circle is you, all of the white space, I guess we could say that's God. Every time that we unite our intimate or are having sex with someone, it's like, in my opinion, I feel like that is really, is taking up space for us to be able to be united with God, right? In that verse 17, where it says, but he who unites himself with the Lord is one, is one with him in spirit. So it's like, it's not saying you don't love God, you don't want to be with God, but it's like, when we are so of the world, it becomes very, very hard to also be one with God, right? So this space, and this this is no shaming someone. This is not make you feel bad about your decisions, but just reminding you of what we are called to be, reminding you of, you know, our relationship and how we need to be one with him and reminding us of how hard it is to be one with him, to be in that Garden of Eden uh, moment with him if we're so focused and so filled up with other people. And those of you who know about soul ties, you can understand this reference where it's basically saying like the more people that we're intimate with, we are connected to their spirit. So just look at how much space is of the world and how much white space is left for God. And the thing is, even though we've done this, even though we've been of the world, even though we've taken our complete self and let the world enter in, whether it's through intimacy, whether it's through letting the thoughts and lies of the world come into us, there is always space. There is always opportunity to come back. What we have to do is take advantage of that opportunity to come back. Now, of course, this won't work if I were to, but if you were to take the white crayon, this is you getting back to God. This is you getting rid of the soul ties. This is you saying, okay, God, the, the intimacy that I've had with the world. And again, not just sex, but of course, you know, that's what the verse is definitely speaking about. But just metaphorically, if you're looking at everything that you've done in the world, all of the ways that you believe the world over believing God, that you allow the world to make you heavy. Because that's the other thing. Every color that you see here, imagine that being a weight of the world, the thoughts and opinions of the world, the world telling you, oh, it's okay for you to do this. Oh, it's okay for you to cuss. Oh, it's okay for you to, you know, like take something from somebody, you know, because they're not looking like that. That is weights of the world. Intimacy with other people is our weights. If they are not your, your man or woman of God in, in marriage bond, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's always room. There's always space for you to come back, for you to get that communion with God. And just like I've been speaking about Eve moment ministry, Genesis two and 25, where you are naked before God, where you bring all of this, all of this heaviness, all of this weight, all of the soul ties, all of the sins back to God and say, God, I am ready to be naked with you. I am ready to be who you have called me to be. I pray that this was a blessing today.